Digital has major product enhancements and new products that further deliver our all-in-one phase two commitment to the leader in enhanced team computing solutions, the next generation of Office. To help you better understand the significance of these announcements, we are going to show you some of the products. This videotape is not meant to provide a thorough demonstration of each product's capabilities. Rather, it highlights some of the major new features in existing products and gives an overview of some of the new products. We have changed the name of All-in-One to the All-in-One Integrated Office System Server to reflect its expanding role in the uh, client server all-in-one phase two program. The first thing the user will probably notice as they log into version three of all-in-one iOS is that there is a new drawer hierarchy. So now users will be able to file their documents uh, in an additional hierarchy so they can go file cabinet, draw folder, and then the title of the document. There's two uh, basic areas of improvement uh, in version three of all-in-one iOS. Uh, one from a personal productivity perspective, the second from a team computing perspective. Let's run through some of the uh, new features in uh, version three from a personal productivity improvements perspective. And uh, we're going to show some of the improved reading capabilities for the all-in-one iOS user as they read a document. If I do a gold M, you'll notice some new features like the ability to read from the next or previous attachment. Uh, I can also go to the uh, next screen of the menu and you'll see I have additional capabilities. In this case, I'm going to show the ability while in read mode to do a text search uh, looking for a phrase of text. In this case, we'll use the term all-in-one iOS server. And as you notice, you can search both forward and backwards. Now we're going to take a look at some of the uh, new features available through version four of WIPS Plus, which is now part of the all-in-one iOS product. We have a document here. We'll go in to edit this document. Another new feature of uh, version four is the ability for on-screen multi-column editing. By hitting the gold right bracket, I invoke the uh, multi-column editing. You'll notice right off that we now have a three-column uh, document here. Uh, you'll notice multiple left and right rulers as well as alignment markers. Once I'm through uh, with the um, editing in multi-column mode, I just hit the gold uh, bracket, right bracket again in order to return to my standard editing mode. Uh, one of the uh, last features I want to show you today is the ability to uh, manage uh, and edit multiple documents at the same time. Uh, by hitting the gold uh, sentence or seven keypad uh, on the keyboard and hitting return, you'll see that I now have the ability at any point in time to uh, have uh, up to 10 documents available to me for editing. Next thing we're going to see as far as personal productivity is the ability to create a distribution list from a mail message. So I just type DLM, which is the uh, requirement for distribution list creation from a mail message. I will give it a new uh, distribution list name. And as you'll see, I can add either the two fields, the carbon copy fields, or the sender field, or all three. In this case, I'll capture all of the addresses and the distribution list has now been created. The last user improvement that we'll show today is the ability from within a document uh, to now get an index of attachments. I'm going to select a mail message called sales update articles and I'm going to ask for an index of all the attachments. As you can see, uh, attached to this mail message are multiple documents which are in fact drafts of sales update articles and mail messages. And now because of the index select capability, I can go through and just select the document pieces of those, that mail message and file those away for future use. Now I'd like to talk about some of the improvements uh, we've made in version three of all-in-one iOS uh, that have added significantly to team productivity. Uh, and some of the uh, major enhancements 
uh, start out with a new ability for an end user to create a list of individuals uh, and have that list known as a group identity. The new capability is called group services. I can access that by typing GS uh, and uh, this is the main menu from the group services uh, subsystem. In this case I'm going to create a new work group and I will call this group the monthly report and if I chose I could put a description for that. It's now going to give me uh, a form in which case I will add uh, a couple of uh, users uh, on this system and by hitting again gold menu I can also add as part of this group uh, another group. So I will select a subgroup that I want to add to the list. Uh, in this case if I hit the find key uh, it will show me all of the groups I have available to me. I'm going to add my staff as part of this new group identity and it is now created. I also have the ability to create a work group from the mail message. One of the added benefits of uh, being able to establish uh, work groups is the ability to share documents uh, based on membership to that group. We're going to go now into the file cabinet maintenance and we're going to create a drawer uh, that we will uh, share with the group. I go into drawer management first. We're going to create a drawer and again I will call this the uh, demo drawer. Uh, again we could add a description And you'll notice I can now mark this drawer as either a shared or a non-shared drawer. In this case, I'm going to mark it as shared. You will also note that there, are, there is a new field called drawer type. In this case, you'll see that there are two types of shared drawers. One is a regular shared drawer in which everyone will have the same access. Uh, and then there is an advanced shared drawer where I could have different sharing access by various documents. I'll choose a uh, regular shared drawer uh, for this new drawer that I'm creating. This is the form that it will uh, require to be filled in by the user to determine who has shared access. In this case I'm going to share the access with a group that I created called staff and I am going to give my staff both read and create access to this team drawer. I now have uh, created a drawer that is shared by my staff and I can now modify access to the drawer and the documents within the drawer by simply making modifications to the group services component. So as people uh, are added to my staff distribution list, I just add them to the group services module and they get access to all of the uh, documents within that shared staff drawer. One of the great new capabilities of the new shared file cabinet capability in all-in-one iOS comes from an option that is available to customers called the all-in-one distributed sharing option which now allows users to share documents and drawers across the network. I will now show you the great team interworking capability, uh, particularly uh, beneficial to uh, managers and secretaries. We're going to go into the electronic messaging subsystem. And I now have a new capability. Again, to uh, actually give other users access to my mail account so that they can handle my mail on my behalf. Uh, the first thing that one would have to do is actually 
give mail access to another user. Uh, in this case, I'm going to give mail access to my secretary. And I'm going to allow her to both process and send mail on my behalf. I do have to remember to share the drawer uh, with my secretary. Now, uh, I will actually go in and set the mail user. Uh, SMU would be my menu option. All right, I'm now uh, setting the mail user to Barbara Liberty's account. All right, I am now in my account uh, being able to uh, handle Barbara's mail. This is ideal for a manager secretary. So I will go in to, I'm now in Barbara's account. I'll do an index of the inbox. And I see there's a request, uh, request for Barbara to uh, cover a meeting. I can read the mail message and I will respond to it. And I will now send uh, the memo on behalf of Barbara uh, to the requester saying that she uh, can cover this meeting. This is an ideal uh, team into working where uh, one individual can delegate the ability to handle their mail uh, to other users without requiring you to give those other users access to your all-in-one account. And if I were to do an index of the outbox to read the message I just sent, you will now see a new line in the message header that says it, the memo was sent by Steve Martin uh, acting on behalf of Barbara Liberty. And to get back into my own account, I would set a uh, mail user back to uh, myself uh, and uh, I am now back into my own all-in-one account and my own uh, mailboxes. That's just a quick look at some of the major improvements in all-in-one iOS server version 3 that provide some great improvements for both personal productivity and team interworking. Uh, version 3 of all-in-one iOS is a major deliverable towards meeting our all-in-one phase 2 commitment. The All-in-One Personal Assistant is a new product for All-in-One that enables users to better manage their electronic mail accounts. It helps power users deal with large numbers of messages as well as dealing with their file cabinet folders. In the basic product, you'll see on this menu that the, the first three choices on the menu are default menus that classify messages into one of three different categories, urgent messages, manager's messages, or watch messages. And out of the box, the all-in-one personal assistant will, based on a name, classify incoming messages into one of those three folders. But it's a lot more than that. It allows you to set up rules that you can use to manage your mail the way you want to manage them. And in order to facilitate that, there is a rule manager. And we'll take a look at that now. The rule manager allows you to create custom rules and to create rules that will manage your electronic mail messages the way you want them managed. It's following the same conventions as any other all-in-one application and what we'll do now is we'll create a simple rule and then we'll test it. 
when I do a create command, it asks me for the name of the rule. Let's say I'm creating a rule that, to handle my mail while I'm on vacation. So I'll call this rule the vacation rule. After I give the rule a name, it brings up the rule editor. The all-in-one personal assistant allows me to operate on any field in an all-in-one mail message. If I press a gold list here, you'll be able to see on the screen the different attributes of a mail message that I can write rules on. For example, if I choose number one, I can say if the address E contains, meaning either a two or a CC, a name such as Fred Jones, who may be my boss, and again, I'll do a gold list so we can see the choices. For example, and the date is after, I'll choose number 11. Tenth of January, 1991. And if I want to do more ands, I can continue with the number of if conditions virtually unabated. So I can say and, and let's again take a look at the choices. And I'll say the subject contains, I'll choose number 14 off of this menu, something with my project in it, or the subject contains vacation days. Once that criteria is met, then I go to the then category. And again, I can take action based on that criteria. So for example, if a message meets those criteria, I may want to say forward it, I'll choose number six here, to Jan Smith at TKO. And now I've created the rule. So let's go back and take a look at what we just did. We'll edit the rule. And we'll see that we have created a rule that says, if the addressee field contains Fred Jones, and the date is after 10th of January 1991, forward this message to Jan Smith at TKO. I'll say I also wanted to file that for my own reference later. I can come down to the then actions, and I tab to the next field, and then I simply do a list and select the action that I want to happen. I want to file this message. I could have just as easily have typed file message. And I'll give it the folder name that I want to file this message in, which is Fred Jones Messages. And if I go back and read that rule, I can see that I've created a rule called vacation. And if the addressee contains Fred Jones, that means two or carbon copy. And that memo comes in after the 10th of January, 1991. And the subject contains my project or vacation days. That memo will be forwarded to Jan Smith at TKO and filed in my file folder under Fred Jones messages. The all-in-one personal assistant allows you to create any number of custom rules to handle virtually any kind of a situation where you may want to process your mail electronically. A personal assistant allows you to also to group the rules into rule sets so that I can have more than one rule executing at the same time. It also has test modes to allow me to test rules before I actually uh, put them into uh, force. So what you've seen in this brief demo is how the all-in-one personal assistant can be used to create custom rules to deal with incoming mail messages, red mail messages. The custom rules can be applied to any folder in your file cabinet, although most often the all-in-one personal assistant is used to manage incoming mail and bring to your attention special messages uh, coming in of an urgent or an important nature. The all-in-one personal assistant runs against your incoming mail folders or against other folders in your cabinet, either on a periodic basis as you specify it. For example, I may want to run, it, run a set of rules against my inbox every half hour, but run a cleanup set of rules against my red box 
once a week. Or you can run it on an ad hoc basis. I could sit down when I log in in the morning and run the rules against my inbox and let it sort out the messages in that inbox. It also provides you with an activity report which will tell you what rules impacted what message and what was done with that message. So I think you can see that the all-in-one personal assistant is a great help in dealing with large numbers of mail or any documents in your file cabinet. I'd like to demonstrate to you now some of the new features of the all-in-one desktop for DOS version 1.1 and I also want to highlight some of the new features of the all-in-one desktop server for VMS version 1.1. We won't be demonstrating the all-in-one desktop server version 1.1 to you but some of the key new features of that server are it's been redesigned to reduce the overall number of all-in-one image activations thereby improving the performance of the server, providing a greater number of PCs can be supported by one VAX and also improving the overall load balancing of the server. A new distributed directory service snapshot capability so that within the network directory of the all-in-one desktop for DOS I can have a snapshot of my DDS or my distributed directory services. Also the user interface for the all-in-one desktop server has been modified so that it has an all-in-one iOS FMS forms driven user interface. Finally, the all-in-one desktop server version 1.1 can support the desktop for DOS version 1.0, the desktop for DOS version 1.1, and the desktop for Macintosh version 1.0 clients. New features of the all-in-one desktop for DOS version 1.1 include word processor of choice for electronic mail, which also includes using WIPS Plus DOS version 4.0, overall faster mail processing, so I have streamlined mail processing steps as well as faster performance when doing a mail transfer. Within the PC file cabinet, what, we're, what we call an application launcher, where I can automatically launch an application by selecting the document or data type of that particular application as well as within terminal emulation support for the gold key terminal emulation style. Right now I'll go into user setup and identify how I would set up my word processor of choice. So I'll go to editor and viewer maintenance and go to the modify editor and viewer list and as you can see I have the ability to set up the CDA viewer or WordPerfect. Then I'll go to select the editor and I'll highlight WordPerfect. So now I have WordPerfect as my editor of choice on the PC. Let's now create a mail message and we'll show you some of the faster mail processing overall where we've been able to streamline some of the uh, addressing fields. So I can just type in a quick name I won't put any CC's and I'll type in a uh, subject. I'll then type a line of text and save the document. At this point I could send the message or store it in my created folder so I'll just save it in my created folder. And that completes the quick tour of the all-in-one desktop for DOS version 1.1. I want to give you a quick overview of some of the key features of the all-in-one desktop for Macintosh. I'll demonstrate many of these features in more detail later on in the video. With electronic messaging, I have a series of features available to me such as read and create mail, sending and receiving mail, um, maintaining our mail logs, 
as well as enabling or disable mail bagging. Remote access features enable me to do file transfer, terminal emulation services, or time management into the all-in-one host base system. Business applications enables me to call other Macintosh applications. This is most important to Macintoshes that don't support the multi-finder. So if I'm working on, say, an, an early Macintosh SE, I can call my applications directly from within the desktop for Macintosh. Directories are my address book, uh, distribution lists, and also my network directory. And we'll use these directories when we're creating a mail message. Service setup is how I can overall uh, configure the Macintosh, such as adding a new service or deleting a new service. Also available to me are my desktop server setups and the manager's menu. Normally the manager's menu is not available to the end user of the desktop for Macintosh, but this is where many of my customization tools are available to me, such as the ability to create new help screens, edit the existing help screens, um, modify overall the desktop for Macintosh, work with a script debugger if I'm writing new scripts, and also work with the desktop editor, which allows me to do additional customization work. Let's go back to electronic messaging and create a mail message. I'll single click on read and create, and what is then brought to me are the functions that I can then do within electronic messaging, such as creating a mail message, sending and receiving, finding a particular mail message, um, extracting when people have sent me binary files and I want to um, save those, I can then do an extract and also delete. Within the inbox, I can click and you'll notice I have a series of messages that available to me. And to then read these messages, I can then very easily just click on them. I also though have the opportunity of deleting before reading. So I can highlight a document very easily and then simply um, select delete and that message is, will be automatically deleted. I can also do multiple deletes. So I have a nice easy way overall of working with the desktop for Macintosh. To create a mail message, I simply click on the created button and up will come my messaging features and I can click on address and I'm going to fill in the to field. Um, in terms of addressing, I can first of all put on a subject and we'll call this message for the video. And within the address book, I've put in a series of names so I can easily highlight that person's name and click on to or if I needed to, I can directly double click on their name. I also have though available to me distribution lists so I can simply double click on the distribution list if I need to. I also have the opportunity down here though of putting in um, freeform entries. I'm all set on that component. I can then type in uh, a simple message and then if I needed to I could do any you know, type of series of, at of file attachments that I would like to. I can easily scan through a variety of my folders and automatically uh, select a document. To find an attachment, I'll just scroll through my Mac hard disk and I'll go into the Microsoft Works folder that I have. I'll double click on there and I'll select README. So I can just then uh, double click on README and that file will automatically then be attached to the message. Since I'm all done with this message, I can then click on send and receive and it'll ask me if I'd like to save the message. It'll be yes and at this point I would then connect into my all-in-one host space system. I can also access many of my desktop for Macintosh features directly from a pull down, such as creating a mail message or creating a new folder, uh, creating a message based applications, deleting a message, doing any of my addressing, sending and receiving, or finding. So we support a variety of ways of navigating within the all in one desktop for Macintosh. Remote access capabilities include file transfer and terminal emulation sessions to my all-in-one host base system. We'll now log in using the all-in-one desktop for Macintosh and 
show you the VT320 terminal emulator that we use. With the desktop for Macintosh terminal emulator, I have available to me a command palette overall. So I have a series, it's very easy to add any new features into the command palette. And once I've added one of these components, I can then simply do a quick pull down uh, and provide a series of accelerators for me to move into my terminal emulation session. So many of these keystrokes can be quickly modified using the command palette. But I just wanted to log in quickly to all-in-one and then I will exit back out and we will return to the all-in-one desktop for Macintosh locally on the Mac. Within my directories, it's very easy to add a new entry into the address book. Simply click on create and can then type in a new person's name. I can then fill in a series of additional information within those different fields as well as their email address. And then I have a second page available to me where I can type in um, any type of information about the person that I would like to have. Now I then save it and you'll notice that Steve Martin has now been added to the address book. Also with the distribution list, it's very easy to create a new distribution list. I can just click on create and then I have a dialog that's presented to me and I can fill in the information as I need to. Within service setup, I can configure a new host service and I have a series of tools available to me in terms of the scripts that are utilized, the service that I'm connecting to, as well as some of my user profile information. And the tools at the bottom are how I would be setting up my overall file transfer and terminal emulation tools. So I'm connecting into the host of marketing, but if I was dialing in instead, I could use a variety of different tools that are available to me. Also within the terminal tool, I can set up my VT320 terminal emulation session. I can also set up my screen modes and my keyboard layout. I have a series of other terminal emulators available to me. Desktop setup are some features that are identified when we need to customize the product according to uh, a new user, as well as the manager's menu here allows me to customize the entire desktop for Macintosh products, such as working with the help system or writing new help screens or modifying the existing help screens that are there overall. So that was a quick tour of the all-in-one desktop for Macintosh. The All-in-One Manager for LANs is an office management software product which allows for integration of heterogeneous PC LANs into an all-in-one iOS network environment. With this product, diverse PC LANs can enjoy some of the mail handling and routing, security, system management and office services available today in the All-in-One iOS environment. The PC LANs currently supported are Novell, 3Com, Banyan and Pathworks. The product is composed of two packages which work together to provide the full product functionality. They are the all-in-one manager for LANs and the all-in-one manager for WANs. The all-in-one manager for WANs is a VMS module and provides a gateway interconnect to the all-in-one environment through the digital mail bus. The main functions of this module are the delivery and pickup of mail to and from the all-in-one manager for LANs, and the all-in-one environment, the automatic updates of the digital directory services, and the consolidation of mail message accounting data, which is used for performance management, chargeback, and capacity planning purposes. The all-in-one manager for LANs is the main product, 
and will be demonstrated here. The all-in-one manager for lands is modularized to provide flexibility of implementation within the customer's unique environment. There are three software modules that make up the all-in-one manager for lands. These three modules are the Postmaster, the all-in-one LAN user manager, and the end user interfaces. These software modules are distributed on various PCs in your environment. The Postmaster module is the main module of the all-in-one manager for LANs and resides on a dedicated PC. The Postmaster functions include handling and routing of mail, encoding and decoding of mail, automated DDS update, virus checking, document conversion, message tracing and tracking services, and automatic software updates to end users. All Postmaster activities are set up at installation and handled without human intervention. All other software modules are downline loaded from the Postmaster to maximize ease of installation and software distribution. Each Postmaster can have up to nine assistant Postmasters for performance improvement. Each assistant Postmaster is a dedicated PC which shares the duties of the Postmaster. The next software module is the LAN User Manager. The LAN User Manager is a privileged end user which allows one person on each PC LAN to manage the end user profiles in that particular environment. LAN User Manager functions are password protected, so only the appropriate person can make changes. The last software module is the End User Interfaces. The all-in-one manager for LANs offers two supported user interfaces, all-in-one desktop for LANs and the all-in-one iOS for LANs. The all-in-one desktop for LANs is the standard all-in-one desktop version 1.0 interface. The all-in-one iOS for LANs is an all-in-one iOS gold key lookalike. Each of these interfaces is downline loadable from the postmaster. We're now going to demonstrate the normal flow of a mail message through the all-in-one manager for LANs by creating and sending a message from the user that has the all-in-one iOS interface and receiving it by a user that has the all-in-one desktop interface. Let's start up the all-in-one iOS interface. As you can see, it is password protected. The password is set and can be changed by the user. This is the main screen of the iOS interface. As you can see, it looks exactly like the standard gold key client. Now let's create a message. The first thing we need to do is set the addressees. We can choose the addressees using the gold search function. Each of the people we choose here is a validated address. We also need to enter a subject priority and whether we wish delivery receipt. At this point we are in our word processor and enter data just like we're used to. When we're done we exit the word processor and get back to the iOS screen. Now we want to add some DOS attachments to this mail message. We bring up the attachments and select several files. Now we have to tag those attachment files with our word processor of choice. We're now ready to send this document. Sending encodes the files so that they can't be read while they're on the network wire. Only the original sender, the addressees, and the postmaster are capable of decoding and reading the messages. The process of sending simply means transferring these encoded files from the end user to an area on the file server that the postmaster checks. As you can see, the message is now in the outbox. Now we're ready to go on to the postmaster and see how it handles the receipt and delivery of this mail message. When the postmaster gets to the file server our all-in-one iOS user is on, it first checks to see whether there have been any changes in the end user profiles on this file server. 
if there are, it picks up that information and uses it to update its internal records. Next, it checks to see if there's any mail to deliver to this file server. In this case, there isn't. Then it checks whether there is any mail to pick up from this file server. As we can see, the postmaster has found the message our all-in-one iOS client has sent and transfers those files from the server to itself. When it is completely done with the current server, it goes on to the next server in its list and so on until it has made one complete circuit of all the file servers it serviced. At that time, it restarts itself in standalone mode, that is, not connected to any network. The Postmaster PC is now completely secure. No one can read the files on the Postmaster because it is not logged into any network. Now it decodes all the mail messages it has. Now it scans any mail messages for viruses using the Norton antivirus program. Now it will do document conversion. If the mail message is not in the same format as the addressee's format, it uses keypack for DOS to convert the mail messages to the right format. Finally, it re-encodes all the mail messages in bags to be delivered to the correct users. At this point, it will start going back through its list of file servers and connect to each one in turn. This time, when it gets to the file server the all-in-one desktop user is on, it will copy the encoded mail file into the appropriate area on the file server. If the mail was to be delivered to the wide area, it would now be deposited on the all-in-one manager for WANs that we mentioned earlier. If any other services, such as software update, are needed, they are handled automatically in the background. The all-in-one desktop for LANs is the same as the standard desktop interface except for the mail notification checker. This checker periodically goes out and checks the file server to see if there is any new mail for this user. If there is, it pops up a little window indicating new mail and beeps. Now let's go pick up and read this new mail. As you can see, we are reading this message in our own word processor format, even though it was created in WordPerfect. The Postmaster has automatically converted it to the end user's word processor of choice. As you can see, the window enclosing this message is quite small. The window automatically adjusts to the size of the text that it was given. If we had a larger message, the screen would automatically expand to fit the size of the document it's reading. For example, this is a much larger document and you can see that the window has expanded to fit the whole screen. Both end user interfaces, desktop and iOS, can be customized. The all-in-one desktop for LANs is customized just like the standard desktop. Let's now take a look at our client server mail application for the Microsoft Windows environment called All-in-One Mail. I'm using All-in-One Mail locally here on the PC. I have not yet connected into the server. 
Um, and I've created a drawer on the PC called Local Drawer on the PC Hard Disk. I can then create messages directly here on the PC even though I don't have a, a host connection. And I can go to the To field and I'll be presented with my personal address book. So I have a couple of different names here in my personal address book. And I can easily just select a name and go to, or I can double click on a name and I can give myself as a CC. I can also, though, do if I was connected to the server, I can do lookups here um, to digital distributed directory services. I'll then put a quick subject on the message. I'll call it a message for the video. And I'll put in a line of text in the body message. I also, though, have the option, or, or within the options field, I can set a variety of, of options here in terms of how I want uh, my delivery notification, if it's going to be confidential, if I want to keep a copy, if I want a reply request, a variety of those other um, options that I can customize directly for me. I also can put on a series of attachments. And just by clicking on attachments, I can then scan through any of the documents um, within my PC hard disk. Um, I can attach binary files. I can attach text files. It's very simple overall to attach files directly. But for this simple mail message, I won't do any attachments. Um, since this is just a real quick message, just have a line of text, I'll then go to the file area and connect onto the server. And I'll be presented with my server dialog. So I will type in my password. And now I will connect. And when I do connect, you'll notice that I have an additional drawer. This is my server drawer on the server, as well as the local drawer on my PC. So I'll double click on the local drawer. And I have my created message here. Also, I have my server drawer, which has my inbox, my outbox, my red box, and my created box. So now what I can do is I can go back to that created message that I had created initially and click on send. And it'll build the message envelope for me and send the message off. And I should get a beep in just a second, notifying me that I have some new mail messages. So now I'll click over on the file cabinet. You just heard the beep there. And I'll double click on the inbox. And here is the new message that was just sent to me called a message for the video. All of the activities though, that were available to me when I was working locally are also available to me when I'm working on the server. So I have my uh, personal address book that's available to me with all of those names if I want to create messages directly on the server. Again, I can do lookups directly here. This is the DDS template so that I could do a quick lookup. I also have um, the ability to read any mail messages that are available to me. So within my inbox, if I just double click on a message for the video, up will then come up um, that note that we had created. And it'll just say right here, a line of text. Um, I can then easily print this message, reply to it, forward it. I can file it into another document, or I can put it in. Um, the wastebasket. Why don't I close this out? Also, it's very easy to move one message from one folder to the next. So within my mail folder, I have a series of messages. It's very simple to move a message from one folder to the next. So I can just move that to demonstration. Also, I can move it directly down onto the folder on the PC hard disk, the drawer that's on the PC hard disk. So a strong benefit of the all-in-one mail for MS Windows is this very easy way to work from my client environment to my server environment and back and forth. So I can work locally on the PC as well as on the server and gain access to all of my mail messages. Since it is a Microsoft Windows application, we support the pull-down menu option style for creating new messages, creating new drawers, new folders, printing messages, um, editing messages, working directly with the file cabinet for reading new mail or the personal address book or the trash can. I can then also quickly find messages, um, add new people to the address book, um, work with my distribution list or set up any preferences I have concerning my um, system setup. And of course, I have also um, help messages that are available to me in terms of quickly and easily finding product information on all-in-one mail for Microsoft Windows.
This is a demonstration of the all-in-one male for DOS version 1.1 product. What you're seeing now is the initial connect screen that's presented to the user. And you'll notice it's asking for the server name, the username, and a password. So let me en enter the password now and connect to the server. You'll notice our connection to the server takes place relatively fast. And we see here on the screen two draws, one being the local draw and one being the draw on the server called mail. We can open that mail draw now. And what we see presented to us is a list of the folders in that mail draw and also the number of messages that are contained in each one of our folders. The inbox folder I'm using to receive my new mail. So let's open this inbox folder. And we see there are 10 new mail messages in this folder. So now what I'd like to do is to open up one of the mail messages that I've received. And now we're being presented with the, uh, the content of that message. And now, when I go back to the list of messages, you'll notice the asterisk next to the name of the person who sent me that message is, is gone. That asterisk shows which messages have not yet been read. Now what I'd like to demonstrate is sending a message. I'll press F6. You notice the function keys once again at the bottom of the screen, and you see that beside F6 is the word create. So I press that hot key, and it positions me into the to field. Notice that in creating a message that the fields on this screen, we have presented to us the to, the cc, and the subject field. And below that is the area in which we'll do the creation of our message. This is all presented on one screen. And the pull-down menu here shows us three methods by which we can obtain addresses. One would be distribution lists, the other personal address book, and the other through digital's directory services. And the person whom I want to address this message to is John Smith. Pressing tab takes us between the fields. And the subject here is, like a cap like, your review. And we send this message. The message has been sent. And we come back to our list of draws. All in one mail. DOS will allow you to use your favorite editor when you're creating a mail message. It's very easy to set all-in-one mail for DOS uh, into this mode. Pressing F10 will bring us to the system menu and we select customize and we're going to look at the send attributes customization. You'll notice here a variety of fields that can be set. We specifically want to set the default mail editor. Right now it's set for built-in, as you can see. Pressing a space will show us the list that we can choose from. And what we want to do is to set this to use an external editor for creating our messages. And the external editor type. The type that I'm going to set here is for WordPerfect. And if we simply enter the mnemonic for WordPerfect, which is WO, and now pressing page down, and we hit return. Now when we create a mail message by pressing the function key F6, we notice we see the to, the cc, and the subject field. And we're once again going to enter a name here. This tab takes us between fields. And notice WordPerfect now is coming up on the screen. And we are in the WordPerfect editor. All-in-one mail gives you the ability to select a preferred format for receiving your mail messages. You can set this preferred format through the customization feature. Pressing F10, we pull down the customize uh, pull down menu. And we select the message conversion. 
feature. Here you're seeing the file types that I have told all in one mail I want to receive. If a message is delivered to me in a file type which is not in my list through the use of keypack and other conversion facilities on the server, all in one mail will make the attempt to convert the incoming message to the file type that is presented here, starting at the top of the list. By the way, one of the features of the all-in-one mail user interface that contributes to its ease of use is the extensive use of pop-up menus, pop-up menus that are related only to the context in which you're working. If I press the Alt key, we'll see I can create a local draw, delete, or empty a wastebasket. Once I move from my draw context into the folder context, only those functions that are related to working with folders are presented to me. If I open up a folder and bring up the pop-up menu, these choices are related strictly to messages. What I'd like to demonstrate now is the ability of all-in-one mail to operate within a Microsoft window even though this is a character cell interface. We can call all-in-one mail and we'll now connect to the server. And we'll open the mail draw. Read a mail message. So you can see that the all-in-one mail for DOS character cell product will run within a Microsoft window. EBD is a client-server-based electronic document, forms, routing, tracking, and approval system based on mail services. It's an integrated part of the Windows Office client. If I open up my inbox, I'll find interspersed in amongst regular mail messages EBD documents. If I double-click on an EBD document, it launches me into the EBD capabilities within mail. This particular EBD document has been sent to me for my approval. As I can see, I has two attachments to a main document. If I were to double click on an attachment, I get to view that attachment, in this case with a text viewer. I double click on the second attachment, and it will launch me into in this case, Microsoft Excel, because this attachment is an Excel spreadsheet. EBD supports many different types of attachments. They can be DDIF, they can be Microsoft Word, they can be spreadsheets, or word processing documents. This is a live spreadsheet, and if I have the ability to modify this document, it allows me to do so. Over in the right-hand side of the screen, EBD presents me the capabilities I have to modify the document. I can add my own attachment. I can sign my approval, disapproval, or acknowledgement. I can route the document on, and later on I can track the document. Up here, it shows me the routing list. It was initiated by Mrs. Prouty, sent to me, and later on it'll go to a Miss Rogers. Every document develops its own audit trail, which I can look at, shows me the time and date of significant events. If I open up a second document in my inbox, this is an internal purchase order for PC. Here I can click on the form, and it presents me with a live data form. 
This particular data form was constructed using Visual Basic. EBD actually supports any type of forms package that your customer chooses to use. This is a live form. I can enter data on the fields. And if I choose to, I can go over here to Approve, double-click on Approve, and I'll receive a dialog box which asks for my password. So the signature function is a protected uh, operation. And if I wanted to initiate my own document, I can open up the EBD Applications folder. EBD comes with a set of applications already constructed out of the box, ready for use by the end users. For example, I could select an internal purchase order, and it would present me an empty internal purchase order form, which I can then fill out. EBD is a client-server-based electronic document, forms, routing, tracking, and approval system based on mail services. Today I'm showing the MS-DOS client, which is an integrated part of the all-in-one mail for DOS mail system. Looking at my inbox this morning, I see that I have four mail messages that have arrived. Three of them are electronic business documents. If I were to open up the electronic business document, I'm immediately launched into the extended mode of mail, which supports the EBD functions. The first thing is that I'm shown are my instructions as a reviewer in this case. That's my role in relationship to this particular document. I can request that the role instructions be removed, and I'm shown that this document has one attachment, which I'm asked to read. It launches me into a text viewer for this attachment. wish to add an attachment. The DOS file widget allows me to select any DOS file on my system. Specifying whether or not the attachment is revisable or not allows me to control whether other recipients of this business document will be able to further modify my attachment. In this case, I select no. The various functions I can perform in this document include being able to add a signature. and send the document on its way. The next document in my inbox again instructs me as a reviewer, but in this case informs me to run an associated application that has come in with the document. If I run the application, a form is presented to me which allows me to change the data in the form. This is a live data field document. My badge number I'll correct be I'll approve the document. But before I send the document on, I'll take a look at the routing list. The routing list shows me that I am the second recipient of this life cycle, and that the third recipient will be an all-in-one iOS uh, recipient.
I'll send the document. And if you'll notice, if I were to open the document back up again, up in the upper right hand corner, this same document, this request for a system account, is now a carbon copy of the form that I signed. This carbon copy I can keep in my file cabinet and at a later date elect to request a tracking copy. This allows me, say, in a week's time to go and get a new snapshot of this form and receive any updates or attachments and subsequent history that's occurred in this document in the interim. That new carbon copy, the tracking copy, will be sent to me in my inbox. If I go into the last document in my inbox, this document is an offer to install a piece of software on my PC. If I run the application. The application specifies which drive and which directory to have the software installed. I like to keep that. I'll change it to C. And the application associated with this document does the install. The executable files were actually a hidden attachment to this business document. The audit trail of this document is now updated to reflect that I've done the software installation. And my signature of approval is captured an audit trail that I accept responsibility for the software. Now when I send this document on, system management knows that I've done the software installation and have accepted responsibility for it. Today I'm showing you the all-in-one iOS integrated client. This particular client is installed under the business applications menu. I'll enter the EBD mode and read new. The first thing presented to me are my instructions as a reviewer of this request for a system account. It informs me to run the application and that make any attachments necessary. It informs me of what my requirements and my rights are as a reviewer. So I'll run the application and I'm presented the same account request form that I had received earlier on the MS-DOS client. Seeing that everything is correct, I will sign the document. And send the document on. I'm left with a carbon copy of this form as it was presented to me. I can use this form, this carbon copy, to subsequently track the form uh, later in the week. I read the next business document. I find an employee expense voucher. I run the associated application. And I can review the associated information. I can go to the next screen, see the more detailed explanation of the expenses. Back up through the screens and exit out of the application to finish the approval process. And that concludes our quick overview of EBD using the MS Windows client, the MS DOS client, and the all-in-one iOS client.
Let's now take a look at our electronic library product called Vax VTX. Vax VTX presents an online library of information that is stored in info bases. These info bases can store text, graphics, images, and binary files. Corporations use Vax VTX services extensively for making available reports, manuals, procedures, catalogs, price lists, and many other documents. What I'm presented here overall is a screen of a series of different info bases that are available to me. And to access one of these info bases, I can easily just double click on it. The little satellite will then be activated, meaning that it's going to connect into that particular info base itself. These info bases are also set up with a variety of keywords so that I can quickly move to that particular um, info base directly. So up here in the upper right hand corner is a little magnifying glass and I'm going to find one particular uh, video text database that our sales support staff uses extensively called the Bulletin Board of Sales Support or BOSS, B-O-S-S. -S. So I'll click on OK. Again you can see the little satellite has been activated and we'll now make our connection into the video text database here called the Bulletin Board of Sales Support. So within this particular database, we have available to us um, a variety of different presentations and demos, um, information on sales tools and programs, a lot of products and strategies, performance guides. Um, we have a variety of different keywords that we can access. Um, we also have a lot of our different marketing groups that have put information in here, such as the Office and Information Systems group. So I'll click here on number five to access the Office Information Systems group um, database and within this particular database I then have all of the events and training um, brochures that are available to me, um, events calendars, um, strategic presentations, solution guides, um, success stories, and any types of product information that I would directly need to access. Some of the, the keys here along the top I have uh, this particular push button allows me to move back within a particular info base in case I've gone into a series of pages. And then the home button over here will take me back to the first database that I started when I connected into the corporate video text library. Uh, this icon represents setting up a personal magazine so that if I have some particular uh, video text information bases that I would want to access immediately, I can access them directly um, at this point. I also have, uh, through the use of supporting the Microsoft Windows user interface, pull downs that are available to me. So a lot of um, information that's sent to me, or a lot of information that I need to access, I can um, use that via the pull down. So save as would allow me to save a report um, directly from one of the info bases to uh, my PC or to um, another area. I can copy pages. I can navigate you know, to main backup pages uh, very easily. Um, find page info, also do any sorts of customized work that I need to do within VAX, within the video text database. Let's now take a look at our group conferencing application called VaxNotes. VaxNotes provides electronic conferencing, enabling workgroup members throughout the organization to share information. Within the Notes conferencing application, I have a series of different conferences themselves um, that are available to me here in my local notebook on my PC. One of the benefits of the Microsoft Windows environment is that it makes navigating through a notes conference very easy to do, as well as to how that information is displayed to me and how I can gain access to that information. So I now have a series of radio buttons um, available to me for navigating through a particular conference. And to open a particular conference, all I need to do is to double click on it. So why don't we go into the sample conference and take a look at some of the topic sentences that are available in that particular notes conference, as well as a lot of the different replies. So I'll just go down here to the topic sentence area, or to the topics, and just click to take me back to the very first note overall in the conference. Um, and then I can quickly step through my different replies just by pushing 
on the reply radio button overall. So this particular note has 10 replies to this particular topic sentence. I can also, with the strip and pull down menus across the top of the screen, easily navigate through this entire notes conference. So I can take a directory of all the notes in ascending order, and then I'll go here over to the window and arrange that in a cascading style overall. So here is the, the, the different notes that are available to me in this notes conference. And it's a, it's a small conference. It has only um, nine entries in it overall. Um, but with the pull downs, I have a, a variety of options that are available to me, such as extracting a note so that I can write that note uh, directly to my PC or to um, any of my PC directories. I can extract a range of different notes. I have customization and setup features. I have within my notebook ways to take directories of my notebook or adding conferences um, and modifying different conferences. Um, we showed you the quick way to take directories. We can take them in ascending order, descending order, notes that we haven't seen yet by other criteria that I can specify, by ones that I've read. Um, overall, I have within a note, I have ways I can write the topic to the notes file. I can see on the next, you know, unseen notes uh, or read any particular note that I may want to. I could directly go to read a note, say, note 1000. Um, within the conferences, we have quick ways for um, identifying information, such as using keywords, or I can create keywords. Um, also, I can act as a moderator to a conference so that I can create my own particular notes conference and um, allow other people to participate in that notes conference either as additional moderators or as being members in that notes conference. So I can make it a public notes conference or I can make it a private notes conference. 